Hey, what's up guys, welcome back to Channel 1 Tip. So we're talking about the world's most powerful drill, AKA we're gonna be talking about this 18 volt hammer drill from Bosch uh, Power Tools Corporation and it's marketed as the strongest drill. Um, so, you know, it's got a lot of stuff going on besides just being the strongest drill or AKA claim to be. Uh, it's got a lot of nifty features and other stuff going on with it. Uh, we'll throw a lot of information at you. You do not wanna miss this, stick with us. All right, you guys, so this right here is the Bosch GSV18V-1330C. Wow, take that uh, model number into you know account, right? Who's gonna actually remember that kind of stuff? Anyways, um, this right here is marketed as uh, the uh, world's most strongest drill, at least in their marketing and all that kind of stuff, right? Um, but it is in their 18 volt lineup. So let's talk about Bosch Corporation here real quick. So Bosch Corporation has a lot of stuff, you know, they make everything from like appliances to car parts to power tools, stuff like that. But in their power tool division, uh, they've been releasing uh, what they call Pro Factor tools recently fairly recently, maybe since a couple years ago. And you know, I don't know what in the world's going on inside their uh, marketing division, but they've been putting weird things out, names like surgeons, hitman, strong arm, all kinds of fun stuff. But this one is just the world's most strongest drill, okay? Um, anyways. Uh, so they do have a 12 volt lineup, which uses those stick packs, but they also have an 18 volt lineup. And inside their 18 volt lineup exists this Pro Factor lineup, which is the flagship or upper tier of their tools, right? The pro grade tools. Uh, but you know, most of the buy stuff has generally been pretty good so far. Um, so the Pro Factor tools are specifically designed to be used with 18 volt batteries. So um, in their marketing hype and stuff like that, you know, it depends on what uh, battery and stuff you're using with the the, for the specs, but keep, take, uh, keep this in mind when I'm about to tell you, they're 18 volt batteries. You can use almost any 18 volt batteries on almost any 18 volt tool. So the 18 volt batteries will work on Pro Factor tools, but certain Pro Factor batteries like the 8 amp hour and the 12 amp hour batteries will only work on some 18 volt tools, right? So keep that in mind. So maybe there's too much power or something that can be sent from a battery to a tool, kind of burn stuff out, you know, that's something to keep in mind. So it can get a little bit confusing. The only thing you really wanna take away from here is if you're using uh, a Pro Factor tool from Bosch, just go get some Pro Factor batteries, right? Um, so uh, with that being said, let's just give me a little spiel about batteries. So I used to think that Bosch, uh, maybe still do a little bit, uh, used to actually has some of the best batteries. Uh, recently, not so much anymore since a lot of manufacturers have caught up and doing other stuff. But whenever Bosch started releasing the cool packs with the core batteries, uh, they were kind of one of the best at first. Um, but you know, at some point somewhere in there, they kind of just let their foot off the gas and who knows what's going on. So uh, anyways, we're not here to talk about that. Let's go talk about this tool. Um, there's a lot of stuff to talk about here. So let's go take a look at the marketing hype and then we'll bring you in closer and take a better look at it. All right, so this right here is the Pro Factor 18 volt connected ready half inch hammer drill driver from Bosch. It's in the Pro Factor system that delivers up to 1,330 inch pounds of max torque. It has an optional connectivity and onboard user module for control. It has kickback control angle detection and rapid mode selector. It also includes, if you buy it, even as a tool only, a four bit holder, a four piece bit set and a belt clip as you would expect. Other benefits from this thing, uh, what they say is pro factor performance is engineered for tough drilling jobs such as drilling large and straight holes. It has bi-turbo brushless technology featuring brushless high performance motor with a drivetrain system engineered to take advantage of additional power generated by core 18 volt pro factor batteries. It has a two speed metal gearbox that goes uh, zero to uh, 550 and uh, 0 to 2200 RPMs. It's connected ready. The module is sold separately as in most uh, uh, tool lineups these days, um, but you can insert pretty much buy a module, stick it in there and connect it to your uh, app, uh, the Bosch Toolbox app to customize angles and settings and all kinds of stuff. It has 25 clutch settings. It has an all metal chuck. That chuck is actually made in Germany. I will go ahead and point that out. Uh, the rapid mode selector, uh, instead of having uh, one ring to control them all, it's got like a separate mode selector. So that is nifty, we'll drill into that a little bit. It's got an onboard user interface, which provides level angle control 
tool status feedback and temporary kickback control override. It also has kickback control, which helps reduce risk of injury. It has angle detection, which allows precise installation of long straight screws or at an angle. I actually use that more for uh, drilling, but that's a different area. It's got a drill area LED, which illuminates dark zones, okay? It is a half inch uh, chuck. The height of the tool is right around 8.6 inches. It's about eight inches in length. It weighs a whopping 4.6 pounds, allegedly. Um, and it's covered by their standard warranty and you can pick it up at pretty much any of the Bosch uh, uh, authorized retailers. Uh, if you buy it right now, I will go ahead and tell you, uh, we did buy this and it was not sent to us. It's not much of a video. If you buy it right now from certain uh, dealers, you can get two eight amp hour Pro Factor batteries included for free, right? Which is a great deal, especially because the tool is about $199 by itself, right? So the other thing to take away from that is if you do buy the tool, you get two eight amp hour Pro Factor batteries, but it will not include a charger. So if you're going to do that, either make sure you already have another 18 volt uh, Bosch charger, or you just go out and get a charger, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and talk about this tool here. So this right here is obviously the handle. We'll go ahead and move this battery out the way. This is a core 18 volt 4 amp hour battery. Uh, this handle is obviously, uh, I would say it, it's interesting handle. It's probably different than all the other handles that uh, we've seen on, on this video and all the other, or all, on this channel and all the other tools that we've used, right? So this handle is mostly all plastic. There is uh, metal components inside. If you look inside here, it's like metal uh, nut here. Uh, the way that this really works is it goes around the metal gear, gear housing of this and then you crank it here and it cinches down this metal ring close to uh, on this uh, gearbox. The downside to this is that these plastic nubs here that help it index to a certain position are plastic and I can see that wearing out really fast and I'll probably show you that in a second. But the other thing here is that uh, this right here is where a depth guide adjustment would go in case you were using it for like masonry or hammer drilling applications. So uh, this one works in the in the realm or in the way of going on here, right, around the uh, gear housing, and then you crank it down. There's a few that kind of work in this type of manner, like the DeWalt's kind of do that. Um, Milwaukee kind of has like a, a more of like a half crescent moon that kind of cinches down up here. Uh, there's other designs that have like a, you know, uh, a metal, like a screw type bolt thing that kind of screw in. This one actually decides to go this way. So as you can see here, you know, it cinches in there and you know, you just turn the handle and, it's, and it clamps it down pretty well. The downside to this handle, uh, the main thing that I've seen is that because the inside here is plastic, if you use it a lot, like you say, you don't want to hear and for some reason you want to switch to the other side, you just, you know, loosen it up a little bit, move it over to this side, crank it down, right? All that bubbling or, or just moving around or indexing has probably worn out quite a bit uh, the plastic nubs that are, you know, on here. See, because this is hard plastic. Yes, it is probably some type of glass reinforced plastic, but you know, it is plastic. So, you know, with enough usage, I could see that wearing out pretty fast. But uh, in our usage of this tool, and we have used it in really heavy duty applications, we haven't had an issue with this handle uh, going off or, or falling off or having any, you know, loose connections or anything like that. But um, it is nice that they did make it like index and pretty much almost, I don't know, infinite amount of, of positions. There's probably gonna be some uh, comfortable position you're gonna be able to find yourself in, all right? All right, let's go talk about the tool. All right, so this part right here is obviously left-handed part of the tool and you know, it's like, I would say a lot of Bosch stuff going on. So we've used Bosch power tools before, but um, it, just looking at it, it's pretty much, you can tell far away it's a Bosch tool. Uh, the other thing to note on here uh, real quick is like a lot of European branded tools or even German tools, um, the red stuff on here means that it does something. It's like a user controllable function or something like that. So this red button here, you know, you press it to pull the battery out. Uh, this right here is obviously the variable speed trigger, forward reverse switch, and then this, you know, mode selector or gear selector up here is red. So all the red stuff, you can do something with it, kind of almost like Festool, right? So uh, going up on here, the design is very subtle. It'll say brushless uh, here one time on this tool, at least what I can remember. Uh, but it doesn't. it's not like other tools that'll tell you brushless here, brushless here, 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 and all kinds of places. But it'll say buy, buy turbo brushless here. And on here, it will also say kickback control. Uh, it's kind of covered up a little bit by this belt hook. Um, but all this black stuff here uh, is rubber over molded. This black stuff right here is rubber over molded. This uh, coin uh, cover nub thing that you would take off, this is hard plastic, this is hard plastic, and this part is obviously metal. Um, so 
uh, the shiny stuff and the le lesser shiny stuff, I guess, is hard plastic, but all the dirty stuff right here that's collecting salt dust is probably uh, uh, rubber overmold. And this is if this is after we use the compressed air and, and cleaned off a little bit, so it kind of sticks. Um, but other than that, you know, that's what's really going on here. Forward reverse switch, we'll say Bosch right here. Moving around to the back, uh, this right here is obviously where a fall rest type system you can connect to, like a lanyard or something in case you didn't want to use that. The part back here is not completely flat, but it is flat enough to could be considered flat, okay? Uh, moving around to this side right here, it's all, pretty much almost exactly the same as the other side with all the marketing. The belt hook is reversible here in case you did want to put that here, okay? Uh, moving around to the front, uh, this right here is a really nice uh, metal chuck. This is not a Jacob chuck, it's a ROM chuck, R-O-H-M, and this chuck is actually made in Germany, okay? The knurling on here is really nice. This front part on here uh, will turn pretty nicely in case you did rub it up against something, but I've noticed that uh, this chuck, I do really like this chuck, um, kind of like, it kind of reminds me a little bit of the Jacobs chuck that's on the DCD 999, and I do like that chuck also. So uh, this chuck and those, that chuck, I believe, is probably uh, the two chucks I like the most, but just wanted to point that out because this chuck is made in Germany. Uh, this um, uh, clutch ring here will select all the way up to 25. Uh, the one setting, uh, I'm not gonna demo for you here real quick, but the one setting is really soft and really nice. Um, like you could probably do delicate work with that, but if you're doing delicate work, I would probably not be using this tool because this is a really heavy tool, okay? But just know that uh, the mode, the clut setting one here is uh, really soft and also uh, 25 is, you know, pretty nice here too. Uh, right here is also the uh, mode selector and it is a positive stop uh, selector. So um, it's not like you can get it stuck here in the middle. Yeah, you can, but if you're using it, you know, you're not gonna, tr you have to try hard to get it stuck there in the middle. So obviously it's got hammer drill mode, a drive mode and drilling mode. Um, and it is nice that they made this a mode selector instead of just another option on this clutch ring. Cause you know, with this clutch ring, it's got 25 options on here. Obviously if they built it into the ring, it'd probably have a little bit less, but um, you, don't, you don't have to go all the way around past 25 to get to drill, hammer drill and all that kind of stuff. I actually really don't like it when they build it in like that, but you know, we're just picking it that nitpicking things here, but didn't want to point out there is a dedicated mode here. Uh, right here is obviously the drive mode, like low speed one or speed two. And this right here is an LED guide for your angle detect, okay? And that actually works really nice. We're gonna talk about that in just a few seconds, okay? So this right here is the variable speed trigger. We'll go ahead and demo that thing here for you real quick. So right here, we're on mode one. And uh, because this is not electronic clutch or like a band selection or anything like that, we don't need to talk about that. Mode one is just mode one, okay? So here we go, variable speed. Very, it's got really nice control too, right? So one here. Right, let's go to mode two. It gets really soft, here we go. Right, so uh, the variable speed here is really nice. It's got really nice control. The, the variableness of that variable speed trigger is really nice. So in case you know you did use your uh, finger skills to do some delicate work or whatnot, uh, you could actually count on that working out really well. So let's go talk to the interesting brains of this operation here. So this right here, um, it's got a kickback control on and off. So by default, the mode is on. Um, and you can turn it off by pressing a button one time and going to off and you will know it's off because it won't be green. And after a certain amount of usage a couple times um, or a certain amount of time passes by, it will automatically by itself kick itself back on. So this drill was actually designed according to the manual to be used with the kickback mode on. It's mainly for safety reasons, you know, safety first. Uh, so that way uh, the kickback control, once it's on and it feels some kind of kickback and I'll see if I can demo here for you real quick. Uh, there should be a clip I can throw up or I can actually just demo for you again. It will cut the power off so that the damage or prevents damage to the user or minimizes the damage to the user here. So let's go ahead and show this real quick. Turn it back on, go, go like this. There it goes, right? And then when it does kick on, it will be red and the LED will be blinking at you to make sure that you know, you know, that mode has triggered. I'll show it to you again. 
there it goes, right? Um, so I will go ahead and tell you during the testing, um, I didn't notice it at the time, but on one of the runs, it did go off. So I didn't count that run and we did run it back one other time um, another following day because I didn't notice that it went off due to that reason during testing. So uh, just know that, all right? Uh, so that actually works really well. The other thing here to note is that right here, right next to it is the angle selector. And this is probably the only drill I've ever seen that has this kind of operational brains on a drill. There's been drills with like levels built or bubble levels built in here and here and here that we've seen and even bullseye levels and stuff like that. Uh, but this one actually has an angle detect mode. So uh, right here, if you look at it, there are three settings you could select. There are 45, 60 and the smartphone mode. Um, and the smartphone mode, you can go into an app. Once you buy the little tool here and you connect this to your phone, you can go into the uh, toolbox app and then set what you want this mode to be. By default, this uh, smartphone uh, mode here will actually be 90 degrees, okay? But you can change it to whatever. So if you want to set it to, I don't know, let's just say 50 degrees, which I don't know why you would. 25 degrees, you could change it to that. But by default, it is 90 degrees, okay? I'm going to change this setting back to 45 to show you here real quick. And it is on the money. It is really, really good. We did check it with the speed square and also like a digital angle finder. But what that means is, um, when this, you can uh, drill or drive at, uh, with this angle detect mode uh, giving you feedback. So there's an LED right here. As you can see right here, it turned green. That means this drill right here, this plane that's going down right here, like this, the bit that you got going on here, is set at exactly 45 degrees, right? And if you move it a little bit off up here, it will turn orange or yellowish and kind of note that you know you're close but you're not on the money, okay? So go back slowly and it'll say, all right, green, that means 45, you know, it also go like this way and you say, yep, nope, no more on the money, on the money, not on the money. The good thing about this is that it also works on a different plane. So right here, we're talking about this plane right here, but if I go ahead and if I wanna go this way, right? Let's see if I can get the door. If I go here, there you go, 45 degrees. Now it's actually working in this 45 degrees. If I go up here, nope, money. Nope, money, okay? Um, so that works for 45, 60, and 90. Just want to note that um, I can't think of too many applications where you needed to be that precise with an angle finder type thing on the drill. Um, there's been at least three situations that I can personally think of that I've, I've been through where we could use something like that. Um, but usually if you had to be that precise, um, you probably, uh, you know, would be better off using some kind of portable drill press or something like that. So uh, anyways, that's just, that's nifty. So that's actually really nice, okay? So uh, now let's go see if this drill actually really is the world's strongest drill.
All right, so some of those runs were really interesting and we're gonna go ahead and recap some of those runs, all right? We're gonna go through some of this really fast because there's a lot of stuff to cover and we already covered, all right? So we ran this G, uh, B, uh, GSB 18V 1330C uh, with the first with a four amp hour core battery um, and on the light duty test, the five six inch by six inch lag test, the average of daily runs comes in at uh, 2.97 seconds with the peak torque average around 138 inch pounds, all right? Uh, moving on to heavy duty test, the half inch by eight inch lag um, it obviously did not finish that test um, on all three runs but we did put out the peak torque numbers that we saw with those uh with that battery on each run right so the peak torque average on those runs were about 482 inch pounds on average all right then we moved to a three quarter inch auger test the average of that was uh 8.65 and then moving on to the quarter inch masonry test um uh, it, it had the three runs average comes out to about 7.42. Okay, uh, the peak torque that we measured with the four amp hour battery in this tool across all the tests that we did was right around 519 inch pounds. Okay, and the four amp hour battery in this tool comes in weighing and whopping five pounds, 15.2 ounces. That's pretty much like six pounds, let's say. All right. Uh, the thing to note here, I did want to point this out. So on the auger test, um, we did run it on speed too. And uh, one thing we noticed was that because it, it almost didn't it almost didn't make it. And that's pretty much why the numbers were so low. So we, we should have technically ran it on speed one, but on speed two, it seemed like it was kind of going at it. So it did make it all the way through. So we know we left it on speed two, all right? So now let's go take a look at what happens when we uh, run the test using a pro factor battery, which is exactly what this drill was designed to be used with. All right. So on the light duty test, five, six, tenths by eight, uh, six inch lag, uh, the run, three runs average come out to 2.20 seconds with the peak torque average of 155.67 inch pounds. All right. And moving on to the heavy duty lag test, uh, half inch by eight inch lag, the average of the three runs comes in at eight point or 7.84 seconds with a peak torque average of around 505 inch pounds. And then uh, the three quarter inch auger test, uh, we ran it on speed two. Uh, the average of two runs comes in at 5.73. And the quarter inch masonry test, I'm sorry, the auger test was three quarter, but the uh, quarter inch masonry test, the average of the three runs comes in at 5.89 seconds on average, all right? So the peak torque that we measured on this tool with this eight amp hour Pro Factor battery was 590. 95 inch pounds. That's a lot of uh, torque uh, with this drill. All right, um, and the, the, this tool and battery combination comes in weighing a whopping six pounds, 6.2, uh, 6.24 ounces. So it's starting to get pretty hefty up there, okay? So um, as, as you saw in the, some of the runs, uh, one of the runs that we did, I can't remember which ones it was, um, drill to start smoking. <laughs> and I don't really know what exactly happened, but we let it cool down for uh, just you know a few minutes, not a long time, just a few minutes and we went back at the test and it worked fine. So I'm not sure if that had something to do with it, but you know, yeah, it did start smoking, all right? So let's go take a look at the total performance numbers, okay? So the total performance number with the four amp hour core battery comes in at 11.62 and it did not finish because it didn't complete the heavy duty test. And that puts that in 29th place. Uh, pretty much down there uh, at the uh, of the leaderboard, just you know, right in front or right behind the DCD996 using a two amp hour battery, and uh, right in front of the Realme PBLHM101 using a three amp hour high performance plus battery. Wow, these model numbers are just getting crazy. All right, uh, so then we ran uh, the the GSB 18V 1330C with the eight amp hour Pro Factor battery, and that. Total performance number comes in at 15.77 uh, seconds, all right? So uh, that one puts the drill right in 19th place, okay? How did we get the total performance number? We add up the sum of the three averages, the half, the five, six, six inch by six inch lag, half inch by eight inch lag, and a three quarter inch auger. We do not include the masonry test because not all the drills are uh, hammer drills, right? But this one is, so. All right, so uh, now everyone's gonna be thinking, huh, what's up with that? They claim this to be the world's most strongest drill and why is it so ranked low on the leaderboard, all right? That's mainly because this leaderboard, um, the things that we're measuring here is pretty much how fast it can get the job done. They never said this drill was the quickest drill. They said it was the world's strongest drill, okay? So what does that mean? Strongest, depending on how you look it up or what your definition is, could mean all kinds of things. Strongest can say, some people are gonna think it's gonna be the most resilient drill or the most impossible drill to break, right? Just 
stands up to, you know, test the time and stuff like that. Or it just has the most power. That's per probably what most people are going to be thinking, right? Because what's strongest usually is relates to. So if you look at the peak power uh, that we measured using an 8 amp hour Pro Factor battery that had around 595 inch pounds, okay? So if you go and look at the rest of the leaderboard, there's only a few things that come even close to that, right? We have on the leaderboard uh, now currently in ninth place, the Milwaukee 2904, um, using a six amp hour high output battery that we tested at, that had a peak torque measured of around 591 inch pounds. Uh, and then we had also had the Metabo HPT4 uh, 36 volt multi-volt drill with a four amp hour battery that had around 535 inch pounds. And then we had the uh, Milwaukee 2809, which is the right angle super hog that had around 551 inch pounds. And then we also had the Makita GAD01, which is the XGT 36 volt or 40 volt max uh, right angle drill, which had around 507 inch pounds of peak torque measured. And then the only drill that we've measured uh, higher torque, peak torque on the test that we've done was with the GAD01. That's the Makita GAD01 40 volt max right angle drill using a 2.5 amp hour battery that had a peak torque measured of around 617 inch pounds. Okay, that is a lot. All right, <clears throat> so uh, there's only one drill that provided more peak power numbers than this one. Um, but the thing to take away from here is this is not the peak torque that the tool can generate. This is the peak torque that was measured as we ran the test that we ran, okay? Um, so make sure you keep that in mind. I don't want people to go around thinking, you know, this drill can only do this much or whatnot. I just wanted to make sure that it's clear that is what we measured uh, during the test, not the, the tool's maximum peak performance capability, okay? Uh, so keep that in mind. Also, the other thing to note on here, and this is kind of one of the reasons uh, we give you the peak torque numbers or the, or the torque numbers as we're doing the tests, um, because you know we're pretty much doing a laminated uh, glue lamb, or if you want to call it that, it's a, it's a, you know, not a factory made glue lamb, um, but um, it, it, the material will differ, right? Sometimes, uh, even though we do get it pretty much, uh, we, we bought a lot of it at the same time, we've made several of them, um, but the material is just a little bit different as it drills down, mainly because it is KD lumber, okay? Um, it's not like sub, uh, a factory controlled subfloor OSB that's being made, right? And that's kind of why we give you the peak torque numbers because depending on where and when we're drilling into what part of the wood, we don't know what it is because there's like six layers in there and whatever we see on top may not be what's in the middle. Um, the thing I'm really trying, the point I'm trying to make here is that the peak torque numbers are actually gonna need to be more in uh, incorporated into the total performance score if you did want to look at it that way mainly because the peak torque numbers in order for this drill to complete the test were a lot higher than a lot of the other tools that we've tested so far right so um the drill or uh, the drill we tested before this i'm not sure if it's going to be released in this way but the drill that we tested right before this one was the makita gad01 which is 40 volt max xgt drill using a 2.5 amp hour battery and those peak torque numbers on average were very close to the same as this uh, as uh, the one that we just ran with this pro factor drill right so if you look at the light duty test 152 inch pounds and then the heavy duty test 522 inch pounds on average um, yeah, those numbers are a lot closer uh, to this one than let's say the first one on the leaderboard, which is the Flex FX 1271T, which had 115 inch pounds on the light duty test and then 368 inch pounds on the heavy duty test, okay? So uh, this leaderboard number here thing is really just set up to figure out which drills can get the job done the fastest. Um, obviously it's not a equal equal playing ground mainly because you know the lumber and stuff like that is going to be different so looking back on this you know maybe we should have tested it with a subfloor osb or something like that but the thing about the subfloor osb is you're not really going into hard uh lumber even if it is kd lumber um so you know you're just, we're just not going to be able to put that much resistance on it so uh leaderboard may need to look differently as we factor in some of these uh uh peak torque numbers in order to get the job done. So anyways, enough jibber jabbering. Let's go ahead and close the video out, right?
So what can we say about this drill? Uh, this is a good drill from Robert Bosch Corporation. You know, having it smoke on one of those runs kind of got me worried because we did buy this drill. It's not a sponsored video. They did not send this to us. Um, and like I said, the main reason we got this drill is mainly because we really wanted to get the Pro Factor batteries. Uh, we do have 12 inch surgeon, uh, 18 volt surgeon, which is the miter saw, the glide miter saw. And we actually said, you know, the best way to get more Pro Factor batteries is just to buy this drill and just, you know, maybe we'll just get some good use out of this drill. Um, so, you know, we bought this drill for about $199. It came with two of the 8 amp hour Pro Factor batteries to add to our, our, our uh, Glide miter saw lineup, you know, when we start using, or when, because we need more batteries to keep continued using that. And, you know, we got, it's a nice surprise out of this drill, right? So would we go out and buy this drill again? Personally, if I was only looking for a uh, really nice hammer drill, um, I would probably go out and buy this drill, okay? But if I'm actually going in to invest in a power tool lineup or system, I would probably not buy this drill, mainly because the 18 volt lineup from Bosch just doesn't have as much of stuff as everything else does, right? You could say like the top three brands, like uh, not in specific order, but uh, Makita, Dewalt, uh, uh, Milwaukee or right they have pretty much almost every tool that you could possibly need Bosch I don't think they have a lot of the stuff right like even some of the right angle big right angle whole hog drills that we've tested I haven't seen one from them um, they don't have a framing nailer at least not one that I know of right they don't have a lot of the other tools like that right so personally I would say I would not go out and buy this uh, even though we did buy this um, for mainly those types of reasons it doesn't just have all of that stuff but I will go out and say most of the stuff that they make is actually really nice right uh, kind of like their appliances and stuff like that have been really nice like for instance the best sander I really prefer using is that Boss GXV I can't remember what the model number is is the random random orbit sander um, on their 18 volt platform. That's probably the best sander I feel like I, we've, you know, most comfortable sander that we like to use, right? So enough, too far off topic. Point is, this is a great drill. If you wanna buy this drill, I'll definitely recommend you buying this drill. Um, but if you buy this drill, make sure you use it with the Pro Factor batteries. That's how you get the maximum performance out of it. We were a little bit disappointed on the masonry test, mainly because when it comes to uh, masonry applications in general, a few names come to mind, right? And most of those three names, or let's say even the top three names, Bosch is in that, right? Because the first two names that come to mind are Hilti and then Makita, and then Bosch, right? Or even sometimes people will say Hilti and Bosch and Makita, right? So, but the point is that, you know, with, uh, with a reputation like in, you know, in masonry work, the hammer drilling quarter inch masonry application was just a little bit disappointing, but you know, it is what it is. The max RPM of this tool, no load speed was around 2,200 RPMs, and the max BPM was about 30,000, but I guess it's, you know, unfair to compare, like let's say the Flex FX 1271T has a, a BPM of 40,000, right, with turbo, right, and the GPH-01, the Makita XGT uh, one has 39,000. So yeah, it's probably not a good fair comparison compared to that but you know um just you, we just expected you know a different result in the masonry application right so there is that right so go buy this drill if you buy it make sure you buy it from one of those dealers that give you two uh, pro factor eight amp hour batteries for 199 bucks it's a good drill go out and get it let the numbers only speak for you know what the numbers are hope this video helped you guys out you know the don't you don't always need the fastest strongest drill to get the job done just get a reliable good tool and get the job done that's how i'm going to tell you hope this video helped you guys out i'll stop jibber jabbering and i'll see you guys next time